Hello fellow artists and welcome to the Painter New Channel here on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Chris Papa and today I am going to teach you how to paint this beautiful dramatic cityscape scene. But before we get started, just a little quick two minute spiel. So first I want to say I'm so happy to announce that I have improved my filming setup and I am now filming in full 1080p HD. Hopefully this will improve the quality of my videos and will help you learn as you follow along painting with me. Second, I um, I'm listening to your feedback in the comments on my videos and um, many of you have stated that you want to see the list of colors that I use in my tutorials at the beginning of the video. So for your convenience I have left a list of the colors I used in this painting in the video description. Um, there's also a couple of other goodies in the video description including a photo of the, um, this finished painting that you can print out and use as a reference. But you probably don't even need it for this painting because this painting is so easy. You're going to be so surprised at how easy this painting is. All this painting really involves is working with contrast and that's really the um, objective of why I filmed this video is to show you the power of contrast show putting light against dark. So this is a very simple way to learn that. Um, you're going to be amazed at how easy this painting is. It's just a few simple steps and just layering light on top of dark and dark on top of light. It's so easy. Um, and last but not least, there is a um, link to my personal website, chrispapafineart.com, if you want to see some other examples of my work. And the Painter in You Facebook group, which is a growing art community. Um, it is a Facebook group that corresponds to this channel um, and it is comprised of artists just like you. So um, there are artists of all experience levels in there, people sharing their art, having excellent art discussion, um, giving each other feedback on um, paintings, and it has really grown and exploded into a true art community. I think we have as of today, um, around 650 people in there. It's December 2016. And um, the group, I want, first of all, I want to thank everyone who's subscribed to this channel so far and everyone who has joined the Facebook group. Um, it really has become my number one inspiration and I love talking with all of you and seeing all of your work. Um, you know, you are the reason why I have this channel. And um, seeing your paintings and the um, our discussion in the Painter New Facebook group, it has become my number one inspiration, inspiring me to continue painting and do more videos like this. So thank you very much, and I really encourage you to join if you haven't already. So without further ado, why don't we go ahead and start this painting? Okay, the first step on the painting is going to be to do the underpainting. And this is going to be really simple um, for this first step. I'm just using two colors, Ultramarine Blue and Mars Black. And you're always going to want to mist your palette a little bit with any acrylic painting you're doing. And for this first step, we're going to cheat a little bit, and we're actually going to mist our canvas as well. Very lightly, though, just to give it some um, surface water to make the paint flow smoothly. This first step, we're really not doing any detailed painting. It's just to get a base coat on the entire canvas because with acrylic painting, you always want to do two coats. And the reason you want to do that is um, it'll just make your colors look a lot deeper and richer. If you only do one coat, your colors are going to look very washed out. So what I'm doing is I'm mixing this um, ultramarine blue and this... Mars black and just making kind of like a nice dark deep purple and we're just going to come right up here and just really quickly and with not much effort start putting in some sky. Keep adding water as needed It'll just make it flow nice and smooth. I also paint the outer edges of my canvas. Um, they call that gallery wrapping your painting. Um, and the reason I do that 
is because whoever displays it doesn't necessarily have to spend money and buy a frame for it. So what I mean by that is I continue my painting onto the outer edges. So that's why you'll see me always kind of going out on the side a little bit and taking a little extra time. That's totally optional. I just like to do that. Now I am painting from a reference photo that I took from the internet. Unfortunately, it is one I took from the internet that I didn't take myself, so I do not have rights to it. Um, otherwise, I would post a link for you to print it out to use as a reference as well. But if you just follow along with me, that should be good enough. And I always do leave a link of the finished painting for your reference in the description, so feel free to print that out and use that as a reference as you paint along with me. Now one thing you'll notice is that I um, use a slightly darker color on the very top. Um, I'm doing more of a blue here, right below that. And the reason why is because that's going to be um, kind of like the section where the buildings are going to be in the cityscape. So that's going to be like the city glow, um, the f slowly fading into a darker color at the top. Um, and now in this middle section down here, you're going to just kind of want to go in with just solid Mars black. Because that's just going to be kind of like the ground, basically, like the horizon where all the buildings are going to be coming out from. Again, not putting much thought into this. Don't worry about anything right now. This is, we're not really doing any detailed painting. This is just really like almost like a primer coat. I call it the throwaway coat. You may have heard me say that in other videos. That's just a term I made up. Because it's not really going to be part of your final painting. And if you spend more than five to ten minutes on this, you are spending way too much time. All right, and that is it for the first step, which is the underpainting. And we're just going to let the painting just kind of hang out for a little bit. And come back in about maybe 15 to 30 minutes when it's completely dry to the touch. All right, so I've let the painting completely dry to the touch. It's very dry. Um, I actually let this go for quite a while to dry. And now we're going to do kind of the same step, but as you can see, the painting looks very washed out right now. And this is why I like to do two coats. I know in the video, it almost looks like some kind of nice, like, clouds in the background and it actually looks nice but in real life it just looks like really like washed out like almost transparent you can still see the canvas through it so that's why i always do two coats with acrylic we're going to continue working on the sky now but we're going to vary the colors a little this time so on my palette i have a variety of colors here that i'm about to mix a little bit of mars black i'm not sure if i'm going to use that um, on this step. Um, alizarin Crimson, the same ultramarine blue from before, and Burnt Umber. Um, I'm again going to go and just miss my palette. It's good to do that continuously when you're acrylic painting. I use a little spray bottle like this. going to miss the canvas like we did before too. This will just make the paint flow really nicely and will make this step a little easier. And I'm going to just start mixing kind of like a a brownish, purpley, midnight blue with this large brush. I'm using a larger brush this time because I'm lazy and <laughs> just kind of want to get it done. Um, and you're going to want to use quite a bit of paint on this step, especially depending on what kind of brush you're using. Kind of like a midnight purple I have going on here. I'm going to switch to a different brush. That one I was using, it's very dry for some reason. I'm using this um, large filbert brush now. I mean, any brush will do. For some reason, that other one just wasn't really working that well with this step.
maybe I'll go through with that larger brush at the end to just blend in the end. Now the hardest part on the sky is going to be blending it with this lower section, um, but just kind of work top down, and you are going to kind of have to go, like this middle section is going to be a little tricky, um, but I'll, I'll show you how to do that. It, you know, just takes a little bit of getting used to. One thing you also want to be careful with when painting these um, skies or any situation you're in where you're painting like large blocks of color is once you paint like one spot, you don't really want to go over that same spot again. Like, you know, so you might want to be, you know, blending and spending a lot of time kind of like refining what you already painted. But with acrylic, you kind of have to wait for it to completely dry. Otherwise, like, let's say I went here and I started like blending, um, you know, just blending a little more and adding more paint here. It, since now the paint that's there is kind of like halfway dry, it's actually going to like stick to my brush and it will actually like take the paint off. So I'm not going to demonstrate that because I don't want to have to go through that again. But um, if I did, if I painted here right now, it would actually make it lighter and you'd see the canvas again. So if you do have to go over again to blend or add another layer of color, wait for it to totally dry and then do that later. I think you're gonna be amazed at how easy this painting is going to be in the end. We're really gonna be um, leveraging the power of contrast in this painting. So we're gonna go through this middle section later with, um, you know, putting in some kind of like silhouettes of buildings. And then all the city lights are just lighter colors, like l bright whites and yellows, like colors of the city lights layered on top of those dark silhouettes. You're gonna be amazed at how how easy of a painting this will be. All right, now rather than just sitting and waiting for that to dry, um, I'm gonna go and use some of these same colors in this bottom section on the water here. You know, while I have the paint on my palette still, you know, you kinda wanna use that paint and think ahead. So my palette's looking like a big mess here, but I'm just kind of mixing a similar kind of purple, purple color and coming down here. I'm just darkening this kind of washed out underpainting one more time. And as a last step, I'm gonna use that Mars Black that I plopped in the corner here before and just do the same thing. This is just an underpainting, you know, you don't have to put much thought into it. Just like the first step, I'm spending a little too much time on this, again, just because my paint is getting like dry. So just be careful with that. <laughs> Okay, now we're just going to let that dry again until it's completely dry to the touch. Alright, now I've let the painting fully dry. And we're going to do the same step kind of again with the sky this time. Um, I decided that it just needs one more coat. It's just still looking a little washed out on the top here. So again, with um, Ultramarine Blue, Alizarin Crimson, and a little bit of Mars Black, I'm just going to make like a super dark purple midnight blue kind of color. I'm using the larger brush. I use a little more water this time. 
And actually, you know what? I don't think I'm going to really use the black again. I know I keep putting it there and then say and then not using it. I also misted the canvas quite a bit um, right before I started filming. So you might want to do that. I'm adding a little bit more red this time in this purple mixture. Okay, so now we're going to make the city glow, and um, I just took on my palette, I have, you know, some of the purple from before, and I just mixed a little bit of unbleached titanium white. I tried this with yellow ochre a minute ago, and it made this weird, ugly, like, green, um, but I'm looking for kind of like a light, light purple. So um, I decided to use unbleached titanium white instead, because then that doesn't mix into green with the uh, blue. So you end up with this kind of like light purple um, mixture here. And I'm going to just kind of start on the bottom and work your way up. So you're just lightening up the sky with kind of that city glow that the buildings are producing. But imagine that these are like low clouds. So, um, you know, like, I'm just going to kind of imagine, like, a backdrop of, like, some low clouds behind the city that the, the city glow is reflecting off of. And these kind of, like, light, light strokes with pretty light pressure will allow you to nicely blend it with that background, which is kind of still drying. Now what's going to be cool about this is our foreground buildings are going to contrast against this. So just keep that in mind. Um, you want to make sure that you go far enough up so that they can contrast against this. That's the whole reason we're doing this. A lot of the time painting is about getting the lighting and contrast working for you. And now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to skip a little dark spot right here and come in with the light, lighter color again up here. And that'll just kind of give the illusion that there's some clouds that um, the city glow is reflecting off of that are closer to us. I'm just adding these little tiny lighter brush strokes that make it look like there's clouds. It's really neat how it just kind of naturally develops. But don't go too crazy with it. Um, in fact, I think I'm going to stop. I'm going to leave this left side a lot darker. And you know, while I'm still here, I just stepped back and looked at it. Um, I'm just going to go a tad lighter on the city glow on the bottom here. I'm going through those same colors again, um, that kind of like light purple with the unbleached titanium white. And just one last time, I'm gonna kind of come make it lighter down here. Because again, you want something for the dark buildings to contrast against. So, um, you know, you may have to just kind of use your best judgment and decide if it's too light or too dark and go in if you need to one more time. I probably should have let that dry first, um, but I'm just kind of using light pressure so it shouldn't really interfere with any of the coats below it. But look how much lightening up that bottom section really just made the painting come to life. And I know there's not much on here yet, but once we add the buildings, you'll see the benefit of doing this. All right, so I let that fully dry. And now that that background is done, now is the fun part where we're really starting to do the actual painting. 
So on my palette for this next step, I just have some uh, Burnt Umber and Mars Black, but I think I'm mostly going to use the black in this step. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to create some silhouettes of the background buildings along this entire section on the back. I'm using a dagger striper brush for this step, uh, but you can use like any filbert brush. You could even use a palette knife. I love these dagger stripers though because, oh, sorry, I'm trying to get it on the camera here. I, I love these dagger stripers because they have this kind of like sharp angled end and it lets you draw like uh, straight sharp lines, which is really good for doing these vertical buildings. So I'm just going in through kind of like a this like brownish black mixture I'm making with the um, Burnt Umber and the Mars Black. And you could really start anywhere, um, but I'm just going to pick a random spot and start drawing in a building. Just a completely vertical line. Now these buildings are going to be really easy to paint. The hardest part is just keeping a steady hand to make the straight lines. But if you want, you can even cheat and use like a ruler or a palette knife, like some kind of a straight edge. If that makes it easier for you, feel free to do so. Now also start thinking a little bit about the sh 3D shapes of these buildings. So what I mean by that is this building right here, imagine like it's a, just a 3D box. So I'm gonna actually come like diagonally, like down a little bit right here, and then do my vertical line like that. So see, that gave it almost like a, the shape of like a 3D box. I, I know it's kind of hard to see because I'm really not zoomed in, but um, you can see right here, there's like that little slash. That's going to give it like a 3D look. Now you can see it a little better on this larger one. See how I made this little like angled edge? That is giving it that cool 3D perspective. So you can do that if you want. Um, you know, if you're a beginner and you want to just keep it simple, you could just do like rectangles for now. That's totally fine. Because you know, these are dis distant buildings so they don't have to have that much detail. Um, but you know, if you do want to practice a little bit with um, doing some three dimensional shapes here, this is a good way to do that um, <clears throat> with a pretty easy cityscape like this. See how that building I just did way on the side here looks a little more distant now because I made it lighter. Also overlapping is a really good way to experiment with depth. So in this foreground I'm going to go over with this um, darker building again. So just with some solid Mars black, you could just go through that building and again here and cover up that building in the background that you just added. I actually did that backwards. Probably should have done the background one first. But you know, when you're painting, sometimes you don't think through every little tiny thing like that. Um, so actually, now that I've done that, I'm going to do more of these back, I'm going to start with the background buildings first. Now, this little section on the side here, 
I'm just going to kind of paint some little reference, lighter ref reference lines right now. You don't have to do this. This is really just more for, you know, my instruction of the painting. Imagine that's a little tiny patch of land that these buildings are sitting on. Okay, and, um, you know, let's say that over here we have like a little, this is like water, so there's like a little river. Maybe we'll have a bridge back here. I haven't really decided how we're going to do this yet, but, you know, maybe we have more land over here. But these buildings are going to be closer, so they're going to be a little larger. These are just reference lines. I'm probably going to paint over them, but it's just so you can get an idea of where the landscape's going, right? Like, imagine that all this is water here in the foreground. This is all water. You have a little patch of land, some distant buildings here, another little patch of land on the left side here. And we're going to paint more buildings on that. Maybe we have an old church in this city. Just get creative with the buildings, vary them. Don't make all of them just boxes. Uh, most of them you can make just simple boxes like I did here, but just add a couple that have a little bit of character. Like right now I'm making kind of like a cathedral right here. A lot of these older cities, you know, you find these really neat historical buildings such as churches, cathedrals. So. Definitely feel free to print a few reference photos of, you know, New York City or Chicago or Boston or any, you know, big city. It's a good way to get some ideas of building shapes before you start this painting. Alright, so I've let the painting completely dry, and as you can see, um, it's really starting to come together, this cityscape scene. And the next step is we are going to add a whole bunch of lights onto all of the buildings. Now I think you're going to be amazed at how easy this step is going to be, and how realistic it's going to make your painting look. So. We're going to vary the colors of these city lights a little bit, but just to start off, I have some titanium white and Naples yellow on my palette, and I misted that just a little bit. I'm using the um, dagger striper still, and the reason why is because that little tip on the end is also good for making dots. So, you know, when you think of city lights on buildings, they're going to be kind of like these little dots of brighter light. So I'm just mixing the yellow and the white, we're going to vary our colors a little. Some buildings might have a slightly green tint to the light. Some might have some blue. It's kind of up to you. And I'm just going to start coming in on, let's say this one right back here. And just start dotting on some city lights onto the building. Now you might want to kind of give them like a blocky shape as well. So rather than just doing dots, I'm kind of doing like the little vertical and horizontal lines to make like little squares almost. That'll make it look a lot more realistic than dots, uh, but you could certainly do dots if, you know, you're just starting out and, you know, you just want something easy. Um, and this is also a good time to pay attention to the um, the shapes of the buildings in terms of the 3D effect. 
So, like, I'm not going to put any lights on this right side of the building yet. I will in a minute, but first I'm just focusing on the front of the building. And kind of skip around. Imagine, like, buildings in real life. Not all of the lights are on all the time. So, kind of skip a few spots here and there to leave some dark rooms in the building. Now this is what I was talking about before um, with the power of contrast here. Um, the one thing that you should have gotten out of this painting so far is we're just alternating light and dark throughout the whole painting. So think about it. First we started by creating a dark sky. Then we put a light city glow on the bottom of that dark sky. Then we painted dark building silhouettes over that light background. And now we're again painting light lights <laughs> within the buildings themselves. So we went dark sky, light city glow background, dark building silhouettes, light window lights in these buildings. And by going back and forth like that, it allows us to really easily create this really realistic looking cityscape. That principle applies to any other paintings as well, like any landscapes or still life. It's really often about alternating light and dark and understanding how to work with light. I say the most important things with painting are uh, perspective, um, lighting, color variation, and that's all I've got for now, but I feel like there was one more that I talk about. I can't even remember. All right, now as I mentioned, I'm gonna just vary the colors a tiny bit. I'm going through the titanium white, and I added a little tiny bit of um, ultramarine blue here. Blue is very strong though, so make sure you use just a little tiny bit. You want this to be more of like a blue, a bluish white light, almost like fluorescent lighting in, one, in some of these buildings. So I'm gonna come right over here and just test this out on this little building in the background. I think I wanna add a little more blue. Yeah, it's a lot better. It was a little too bright before. But just using the same technique as before, just block and windows, just vary the colors a little bit. Okay, now continuing, I am just using kind of the same colors, but this time I added a little bit of um, cadmium red. And Okay, actually, I added way too much cadmium red right there. So here we go. Let me add more white. So I'm just making kind of like a light bluish purple. Maybe some buildings have kind of a purple tint to them. All right, so now that we're completely done with painting the buildings, I think that came out great, and I'm really loving how it is contrasting against that sky. 
So next, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of establish our um, kind of like our ground here. And we're going to do that by simply putting in some lights that are kind of like on the ground in the city. You know, so those may be like street lights, car lights, um, you know, things like that, lamp posts, um, and so on and so forth. So on my palette, I simply have just some red and yellow. I'm using cadmium red, um, cadmium yellow. I forgot which one this is. There's like a medium and a deep. I think this is cadmium yellow medium and Naples yellow. But I mean, you can kind of use like any red or yellow for this, just like you've been doing throughout the painting. Just because I use a specific color doesn't mean you have to use the exact same one. Um, you know, there's room for variability here. So what we're going to do is we're going to just load up your brush with one of those colors and just start dotting in some like larger light on the ground. And what we're going to kind of do is almost like close off and cover this whole bottom section here of like where the buildings meet the ground by just putting in tons of lights. This step is so easy because all you're doing is just dotting in lights. I forgot to mention for this step I'm using a um, slightly different brush. Before I was using the dagger striper but now I'm using this uh, detail round brush. It's just like a small brush with a straight tip. So I'm just starting off with doing the yellows and then in a minute I'm going to go in and add some red as well. Alright, now once you're done going through with the yellow like I just did, now go through um, the red the same exact way, but just be a little more conservative with the red, because think of a city in real life, you're not going to see as much red as you would white or yellow, so I'm just going to put a little bit of red here and there. And actually, I'm going to start off by putting a red light on the top of this building right here. There. Okay, and now, just kind of go through the lower section the same way you did before with the red. Okay, now just take a tiny bit of either unbleached titanium white or titanium white mixed with some Mars black. Just make kind of like a, a milky gray. Um, and this is just, we're going to go through and just like establish a um, kind of like a water line almost. And I'm actually adding a little more black to this. We want it to be kind of like a dark gray. Now make sure you do it like a little bit below your city lights. See like kind of like how I'm just lightening that up right there. Now this isn't going to matter too, too much once we do our reflection, so this step I suppose you could say is optional. But I like establishing a nice waterline. It just really closes everything off. Okay, so the next step is to just add some reflection. And in order to accomplish this, I put some, I still have my color mixtures from the prior steps of the various yellows. Um, I added some ultramarine blue and titanium white, 
And, you know, I'm going to use a decent amount of water here. I did spray my canvas a little bit, and I actually did start on some of these reflections already. But I'm using this, like, wide brush here, and it's very, very slightly damp. And what you do is you take the colors of the buildings that you previously painted. So, like, I'm, I have this cadmium yellow here. And I know that, like, this building I painted with cadmium yellow, and same with this one. So all you do is just add some paint right below it, and just drag downward. And it also helps to have a dry brush handy to kind of blend it out. You want to put more paint, like at the base here, at the um, water line. And then I'm just going to use this dry brush and pull it down. But there's many ways to do this. All right, now some of these other buildings are making these blue reflections, such as this skyscraper here, and I have another bluish one here. So that's where I'm going to try to recreate that same color mixture I had going on before with the um, ultramarine blue, mixing that just with some titanium white. Try to keep in mind the height of the buildings too. Like, if you have a tall building, the reflection should be taller than if there's a shorter building next to it. Okay, now the last step on the reflections, we did the reflections of the tall buildings first. But now, you also have to do the reflections of all these little lights that are on the ground in the city. So, I'm just going through, um, pretty much just like pure like Naples yellow and um, actually Naples yellow and that cadmium yellow mixture and we're just going to do the same thing but you're not going to go as far you're only going to go like basically the same amount of height as the city lights but just down instead right so like if it's like an inch up you're going to go like an inch down Right? These aren't going to reflect as far as the buildings, because the buildings are significantly taller. Okay, so... You know, I was going to continue doing more and more on this painting, and you certainly could if you want. Um, I originally had plans to put, like, a, a bridge going down like this with, you know, one of those, like, a suspension bridge, um, like, going into the city, which would have looked really cool. But, you know, I'm at the point now where I'm looking at this painting and I'm just so happy with how it looks. It's so peaceful and calming just to look at the beautiful city reflections that I think I'm just going to say it's done as it is. So, you know, sometimes your plans change once you, you know, do your painting. A lot of the time it, you know, you stop sooner or you keep going if you want to, but 
when you decide you think it looks done, that's when you should say it's done. So I think I'm going to just go ahead and sign it and consider the painting done. I hope you learned a lot today on this painting. Um, I certainly had a lot of fun doing it. Um, again, this was a really fun and easy painting to do to get used to working with light and learning how to do reflections and the power of using contrast in your painting. So I encourage you to subscribe and also please remember to join the Painter and You Facebook group if you are interested in, um, in participating in art discussions with other artists like yourself. We are up to almost 600 members now, so there's tons of exciting conversation going on in the group, um, people posting uh, their artwork and sharing all day long. It's really become a wonderful art community, so I highly encourage you to join that. And please remember to subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you again in my next tutorial. Thank you for watching.